So I'm, <clears throat> I'm just going to start talking um, and see what happens, you know, see what comes into my head. Um, I've been postponing <laughs> having to talk for a long time, right? <laughs> but I think it's about time. I'm going to shoot for like six minutes and just see what happens. I'm just improvising now, you know, I'm just going to say whatever I think I should say to you. Um, the first thing is I have, um, I'm, I have a source of well-being inside me that um, comes from outside of time and space. There's, um, it's outside of what they call the matrix. <laughs> the matrix is the same thing as time and space. It's the outside of the universe. Um, the Gnostics knew about it because, um, you know, in Gnosticism, they say that there's the God that created, you know, the world of form. <laughs> Yalda Bawath or something like that, <laughs> right? And he's like an evil god, and he, like he imprisons everybody, he enslaves everybody. Yalda Bawath, right? The, the some kind of misfit son of Sophia, right? Right. Well, and the, the in Gnosticism, the idea is to get outside of that, right? Get outside of the world of form. It's the eternal world, the pleroma, the the fullness, right? which is outside of time and space, which is created by Yel de Boath, or however you say that, right? Well, that's the same thing as being outside of the matrix. <laughs> it's the same thing as liberation in like um, in yoga and, and um, Buddhism. Um, and outside there, um, I, guess, I guess I'm talking to you now because they want me to outside of time and space because I have a pretty clear channel um, out there. But it's like, this is like a movie that we're in um, and we didn't write the scripts. You know, um, they're written above our heads, you might say, by the directors and the writers, but we're the actors. We're down here acting out these, these little scenarios and scripts. And like, we're not totally controlled. We have some free will and they, but they, it, the purpose of being in this movie or this game that we're in now is to see how we play with the variations. We have certain parameters that we have to stick within, you know, we have to stay within, right? But within those parameters, they, the gods, you know, uh, Shakespeare called them the gods, they were called fate or destiny, you know, um, the, the Illuminati, right, um, the Archons and all that, the ones who wrote the script that were in the movie, the game that we're in, right, they set the rules and all, but we do have some latitude to choose and make free decisions, and also in philosophy like Sartre, existentialism, existentialism, they say that we have total freedom, that's not true, but we're not totally determined either, right, so what is it, well we have choices, within limits <laughs> yeah, and if you make the right choices within those limits we can actually get totally outside of you know the the, uh, the the form the world of form but it's our consciousness our mind that goes there but it's already there it's our ground we can't most people don't know their own ground it's, but the thing about it is it's it it has existed it had no beginning and it has no end oh in in um the uh, bhagavad gita it's the same thing um when krishna says to arjuna um, there was never a time when I did not exist, nor you, and nor these people around us, nor will there be any future when we cease to be. So we've always been, we're eternal, we have always existed. We pre-existed this time and space uh, situation, you know, and we're going to outlive it, we outlast it. And so like I know that ground that exists outside of this little game that we're in <laughs> and it's everlasting happiness it could never be anything else because we were from all eternity and we always will be God loves us so much because we've always been together there was that we were never apart this this temporary situation of having a form and having a body and having a life makes us believe that we we are apart from eternity but we never were it's a temporary like game you know um, and like people, other people talk about like um, timelines and things like that. And I've seen those, like I've seen how that plays out. Imagine like if you know like war gamers at the Pentagon and they play out, they all stand around these mean men with these ugly suits and they all play out these scenarios, these horrible men. Well, if we bomb this here, then that's going to go over there. And, you'll, and they plot all these scenarios, right? To see what could happen. And they're interested to find out what the scenarios are and what could possibly happen. Well, that's what this time and space reality is. It's like that. It's like a game. It's like a war game, except they're not that malevolent as those as those pigs at the Pentagon are. 
but it's as a game, you know, it's, and it's, they want to see what the potentials are and what the possibilities are, you know. So that's what we're doing here. We're here to discover what the potential storylines are. If one goes wrong, we go outside and do it over again. You can do any storyline. You know, like this this life of James Mullaney is just a role and others will play this role later to see if they can make changes here and there in it to see, well, what would happen if, you know, if James Mullaney had done this or that, right? And somebody else will go in and play that role and make a change. And there's like infinite variations of everybody's role, everybody's game. It's like uh, in an actor in a movie or a play, you know, they create the role anew every time a new actor takes over a role, every time somebody does Hamlet, right? They're creating it. They're making it their own. And these bodies and lives that we're in here, these are roles and we're making them our own, but we're eternal people. We're eternal beings. We're making these roles our own. So nothing can go wrong. Let me, let me, let me just put it this way. In a game, you want to win, right? The object of the game is to win and it feels bad to lose the game, right? But if you lose the game, you can always say, well, at least it was just the game, right? Yeah, I lost, but it was just the game. But of course you want to win. But if you lose, well, it's okay. It was just the game, you know? It doesn't really matter. It hurts a little bit, but not that much, you know? You know? When it's over, you, you shake it off and you go, oh, well, I'll try again another time. And that's what we've been doing for all eternity. That's what we've been doing. We've won some, we've lost some. And we say, okay, that's another, you know, we, we just keep trying and keep doing it over and over again. Or it's like, um, I had another analogy, um, the game, um, oh God, it escapes me now. Um, oh well, but it's like that, you know. Uh, if oh, I know what it is. Say, say like, a, if you write a play, right? I'm a playwright, and I've written tragedies, and I've written a couple of comedies, right? So, if you're writing a tragedy or a comedy, you're, you're in it. But like, so what's the difference? If it if it's a tragedy or a comedy, it was only make believe, you know. This whole thing that we're in is make believe. It's like a tragedy or a comedy. We want it to have a happy ending. You know, we all want to have a happy ending. Uh, but if it has a tragedy, the, all right, it's a great drama anyway. You know, and we're just the actors. We, we are the actors who are acting out this great tragedy or, or comedy. And in the final analysis, it doesn't matter if we're in a tragedy or a comedy because we were only acting the whole time. It was never real in the first place. This, this was just a show. It was a play. Uh, by the way, here's something most people don't know. What we're doing here on Earth is being witnessed by countless beings all over the universe. You know, it's like a stage. Imagine a brightly lit stage in the middle of space, right? With gigantic lights. And this, on this stage is everybody in the world, right? And everything we do is being witnessed by a, a massive audience. Like you wouldn't believe it. You think we have privacy. You think the things that we do are unknown. Every single thing we think, every single thing we do is witnessed by countless, countless trillions of beings all over the universe. They're all watching us. This is at the center of it all, this, this world and everything that we're doing. Nobody gets away with any evil. You know, the, the, the pig in chief in the White House is not going to get away with any evil. The pig in chief will not get away. He's being witnessed. You know, they're witnessing him. They're, they're wondering, how low can you go? How low can he go? That's what they're saying. How low can he go? But anyhow, you know, he's just an actor too. He's like Yago or something, like a villain, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, you know, hey, you know. I don't know. It doesn't matter. You know, it, it does matter. But in the final analysis, it's, it's, it's all right. It's always all right. You know, we don't want it to end. But if it does, you know, I mean, I hope it doesn't. And if everybody, I hope my wish is I'm going to end up now. My wish is that everybody can get, like, get in touch with the source of happiness and well-being that I have because nothing affects it. I can have pain. I have pains in my body. I have arthritis and I have, um, I think it's sciatic in my legs. So I have pain all the time. But, um, hey, you know, I'm happy. You know, it doesn't matter. It's OK. You know. I know how it turns out and I know everything's okay, you know, so, but I do wish, uh, my wish is, my desire is that you can all um, ha have the same sources of happiness, like get in touch with the same source of everlasting, real happiness, you know, and real peace and confidence that I, that I do. And I hope, I pray that um, my mistress in heaven, the goddess, <laughs> will give that to you and open your heart and your awareness to that. Okay. All right. Bye.